And by the way, not every track needs reverb. Really. Not every track needs reverb. Really. This video is the seven best steps to make your song sound professional after you've recorded your tracks. I just received one song from one of my friends. He sent me out all the tracks so I can mix them. And before I open them up, I wanna make sure I give you guys this. This is what kind of brought up the idea to do this video. Some people tell me or ask me for help in these areas. And so I wanna help you guys if you have a song that needs a little bit of help in some areas, I hope this can be of help to you. So here we go. So typically the progress should be record a song, edit the song, and then mix the song. But typically what ends up happening is this. Record a song, mix a song, slap a mastering plugin on it, attempt to edit the song, and then I get an email with, Andre, can you help me? I don't know what to do. And then I reply, I'm glad to help. So if you're not sure of what to do next to make your song sound better, here are the steps. Step one, begin with the end in mind. Make sure you know what emotion your song is trying to convey before you attempt to make any changes to your song. Is your song more of a chill vibe? Every door. Is it more of a party? <laughs> Is it an anthem? <laughs> Is it a sad song? Hello darkness, my old friend. What emotion is your song trying to convey? This step is very important. That's why I put it as number one, because this is what you're gonna be basing all of your posterior decisions on. Posterior is a word, right? Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna be basing all your decisions based on this, so make sure that you know what emotion your song is trying to convey before you change anything about it. Again, this video assumes you've already recorded all your tracks. This step is very simple, but like I said, it's very important. You don't want to miss this step because then you're going to find yourself making changes to the song and it's not going to convey what the song wants to convey. It's going to be a mixed message. The listener is going to be listening and they're going to think, is this a sad song? Or they're not going to think anything. They're just going to not like it more. Make it a defined sound. So step one is pay attention to the emotion that your track wants to convey. Step two is to edit. This is the step that I see many people just straight up skip. They don't pay attention to the edit and the editing process. And what that entails is you have to fix some plosives. Maybe there are parts of the song that have unwanted sounds. Maybe the cat is screaming in the back or maybe you hear a trailer go by or people talking when they're not supposed to be people talking in the track. All those sorts of things. You have to make sure you take care of all that stuff because if you don't, that's just going to clutter up your workflow, it's going to make it longer for you to edit and to mix. And it's going to be a nightmare when you actually try to make good sounds out of your song. So make sure you edit first. That means taking away all unwanted sounds, all unwanted plosives, and you don't have anything in there that really shouldn't be there. This also includes adding or taking away any breaths. A lot of times I hear vocals that have really big breaths in between and it sounds too harsh and it's not stylistic either. For example, there might be, uh, you know, they'll sing something and then in the middle of the phrase, they'll just go, <gasps> and then your ear's kind of like, what? Make sure you fix that. I mean, that stuff is really important and really interrupts your pattern of listening. Make sure that you're taking that into account as well. Tuning is another thing that is part of the editing process. Don't forget to tune. Sometimes, I know a lot of people don't like tuning vocals, but vocals need to be tuned. If you're singing out of tune, it's not just slapping an auto-tune. Sometimes that might work, but a lot of times it's just going in there and saying, you know what, they were flat in this note, and if they can't re-record it, which is always number one choice, if you can't re-record with the vocalist, if it's you, if you don't have the means to re-record the vocals or you're just tired of it, you can go in and tune. There are tools to do that. So make sure that you fix the tuning issues, you take away any plosives, and you just edit the track before you attempt to mix or to add anything extra to it. Step number three is simple mixing. This includes gain staging, panning, or even just moving the faders up and down. Another thing that I include a lot of times in this stage is slight automation. Just putting a little automation here and there, just adding little bits of things, and uh, panning is really important, and just setting up the levels so everything is right. If you mix by using these simple tools first, your track should already sound really, really good. And I mean that, it really should. 
Once your track is edited and it is mixed by using simple tools, so no compression, no reverb yet, no effects, it takes away from a lot of work that you would want to put into it just by using tools that you might not even know how to use or you might use or you might overuse. So that's why I advocate for mixing with simple tools first. Make sure your panning is on point. Make sure that the tracks are all leveled right. The kick, the relationship with the kick and the bass is not perfect, but it might be 95% there. Uh, if you have a good recording, that's the type of stuff that, that you should really take care of first is just making sure you use simple mixing tools. You don't want to overcomplicate it first. What I see happening a lot is that someone will slap a limiter or a compressor and they're doing like 15 dB of gain reduction on their tracks and slapping a reverb on it, you know, and, and that's not going to make it sound good. It might make that specific track, like let's say the vocals or the kick sound good, but when you put it all together, it's not going to sound good if you just put that on every track. So make sure that you use simple tools first. Make it sound really good using simple tools, and then you get to go to the next step. Step number four is reductive EQ. What this means is just taking frequencies out from your tracks that you don't want, that take away from the track. Things that get in the way from evoking a specific emotion in the listener. Take away from the story. For example, every time the singer sings, there might be this like woo, 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 woo sound, and you might want to take that out because it's too much. And you don't need to do a lot. You don't need to take a lot of it out. Just take a little bit out. It might still be, the, be there a tiny bit, but it's already going to make your track sound better. Reduce the unwanted frequencies. Uh, you don't have to take them all the way out. If you take a little bit of those frequencies out that sound bad, it makes it easier for the next steps. Now, a very important point is do not overcompensate by taking out frequencies that your equipment is enforcing or exaggerating. For example, your headphones might be cheap headphones or either good for headphones, but they might exaggerate certain frequencies in the bass, for example. And you, because of that, you say, you know what, I don't want that frequency in the bass, and then you take it out. But then you go play it in your car st stereo and the bass is all messed up. That's because you took out a frequency that your headphones was enhancing. So it wasn't your song that had that extra frequency. It was your headphones. So you want to be careful of that. You want to know the equipment that you're using. The room might be exaggerating certain things. Uh, the speakers might be exaggerating certain things. So you have to make sure that you know your equipment, you know what you're working with, and you're not overcompensating for the faults of your own equipment. That is a very important point. You must train your ears to be able to hear problems in the room, in your own equipment, and then make decisions based off of that. Step number five is compress only as needed. Now, I realize that for most people, this is their first step. A lot of people just slap compressors on things, but I want to tell you that it is not necessary. Not every single track needs compression. Just compress when you need some dynamic range reduction or when you want to change the tone of the song. Now, this is very important because a lot of people don't realize that compressors change the tone of whatever you're applying it to. So it's not just about making it not as loud or, or making it sound louder through compression. It's also about making sure that you know the tone that you want to evoke. For example, if you put a compressor on a track that is known to be very warm and slow, but you want your track to have a lot of punch or you want your, your track to sound very um, harsh, that might not be the answer. Um, for example, the LA-2A is one compressor that is known to be very slow and warm. That's why a lot of people use it on vocals. But if you want to compress something like the drums that have more transients and they're faster and you want to crush them, maybe the LA-2A wouldn't be a good choice. My point here being, you have to make sure you know the tools you're working with, especially when it comes to compression, because they evoke certain tones and they each have their own tone. They, they each have their own sound. It's not just about reducing the dynamic range. It's also they all have their certain tone, their certain sound. You want to make sure you know them so that your compression and the tone of your track are not clashing. You want everything to work together. Always, always, always use the less is more mantra. When you do want to crush something, know why you are doing it. Don't just go and crush something just because you want, you want it to be louder. Maybe you just want to automate that part. As a general rule, if you don't know why you're doing something, just avoid doing it or keep it if you like the way it sounds. But 
make sure you learn about why it is that you like the way it sounds and what you think it did to the song. Something important about EQ that I left out was don't add anything yet because you're going to be compressing later on and if you start adding frequencies, then the frequencies are going to be enhanced in the compressor. You want to first take away things that you think are problems and you're doing things that help the overall sound of the song don't just focus on a single track focus on the overall sound of that song step number six is add your flavorings now here's when we use things like eq effects like chorus or a phaser or reverb delay all those things you add these things tastefully and you add these things to enhance the emotion you want to convey again this is all about making it sound together, making it sound good as a whole. You don't want to be adding an effect where it might not fit. If you're recording a dry track, something that is very intimate and up close, like maybe an acoustic version of a song, and you're putting a ton of reverb and delay on it, it might take away from the intimacy of it. So make sure that you do things like I said in the beginning of the video, make sure you do things with the end in mind. The overall product, the overall song, what is it you're trying to convey? If it takes away from that, even though that might sound cool, it takes away from the overall sound of the song and you don't want that. Now, adding flavorings definitely will make or break your track because this is when you add a lot of creativity to it. I definitely don't want to be the one to stifle your creativity. I say go crazy, but do so tastefully. Do so because you know what you're doing. You know that you like this because of that and it fits the whole song. If you're just doing something because it sounds cool but it takes away from the rest of the track, it's not gonna work. And by the way, not every track needs reverb, really. Not every track needs reverb, really. And the last step is one you could really add to every single step. And that is make every part sound like it belongs together. Have you ever listened to a track by one of your favorite artists in which they're featuring another artist in the same song? And it sounds like they are singing in two different rooms. It doesn't sound like it's a duet. It sounds like one person recorded in a hotel in Tokyo and the other person recorded in a studio in London. If you haven't noticed that, that's okay. It's just an observation I made some time ago. I listened to a song by a very popular male artist, a duet with a female artist, and they sounded like they were in different rooms. They just didn't sound like it was the same person. Now, she sounded like she was in a different country. And honestly, they probably did record it in a different country. A lot of times that does have to do with the recording. But there are many other instances where it also has to do with the way that you produce the track, the way you mix the track, or the way you edit the track. So if your song is supposed to be light and acoustic, but your drums sound like they belong in the club, there might be a problem with that. You want to make every part sound together. You want to tell the same story. Now, every part of the song may tell a different part of the story. Some parts may tell the beginning. Another part may just be a side character. Each part can add a different flavor, but overall, they're telling the same story. So you want to make sure that when you record, edit, and mix the song, you're taking care of each detail as it belongs to the whole. So make sure you know what story it is you're trying to tell. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like the video and to subscribe. I'm gonna be making a lot of these videos. I hope this one was educational. I hope this one was very helpful. And shoot me a message if you need any help with the songs. I'm definitely willing to help. My email will be down in the description box. You can shoot me an email and we can have some conversations. I can see how I can help you out. Thanks again and remember to always create your own melody. There's always one more